You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a life coach, Nancy can teach you how to stay strong under pressure and work through challenges you face. Being legally blind, Nancy inspires others to be resilient in overcoming obstacles and live full out. You can ask Nancy for advice in your life on relationships, finance, business, health, and more. Just call in at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. Now, here's Nancy. Hello, and thank you for joining us today. I am Nancy Solari, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're going to be talking about trusting your instincts. And we have to do that in life, right? Because we need those instincts to be our guide, to let us know, do we go right, do we go left, what decisions to make. So trust that. Also, our inspirational guest in our next segment, Andrea Davis, is going to talk about how in 2012, her and her husband were on a cruise ship that started sinking. They had to trust their instincts and jump into the cold waters and swim to shore. Really a scary story, but she'll be sharing that with us. And it had a positive outcome, luckily. And today, we're also taking your call. Again, that number is 800-333-0001. Let's figure out what it is that you want to achieve in life, what challenges we need to overcome. And again, trusting those instincts along the way. I also want to make sure that if you need support on today's topic, reach out to us at connect at livingfullout.com. We want to make sure that you're supported. And if you have an inspirational story that you think our community would benefit from, we'd love to hear from you. you again, you can reach out to us at connect at livingfullout.com and let us know what you overcame and we can perhaps have you on the show. Now, I'm getting word from our producer that we do have a caller on the line. We're going to go say hello to them. Hi, welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hey, how are we doing? I'm great. Thank you for calling in. How can we help you? Yeah, um, so I'm in law school right now and um, I got a lot going on. Uh, I got school, trying to find a job for the summer, a girlfriend. Um, I'm just wondering how I can still feel fulfilled and use my creativity to kind of, you know, not feel like life is mundane and the same thing over and over. Mm. Do you sometimes feel exhausted trying to go after everything at one time? It, uh, yeah, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you just have to kind of calm the thoughts in your mind. I think it's great to have ambitions for your career, for the girlfriend, for, you know, other endeavors that you have. But I would maybe just put a little bit of, of, you know, maybe methodical thought into the timing of that, meaning that let's start with law school first, you know, really making sure that you're maximizing that opportunity, that you're doing everything that you can to get the best grades, study partners, personal time for you to study, maximizing as many classes as you can get in because, right, you know, school costs money, right? Every year here in school, right. yep. it will cost more that you got to pay off later. So you want to start there first. Then, you know, yep. women and men, I believe that there are so many great people in the world. And I actually believe that we have more than one soulmate, more than one potential partner. So I think you just mm -hmm. have to be open to have seen that person and finding them, but organically. Now you can put yourself on a dating site uh, or an app and you know just kind of let that be an extra thing that you do on the side. Or if you really want that, and, and maybe that's something that you're craving, then become more intentional with it. But again, it's kind of around scheduling. So for example, several of my clients do um, the, the dating on the apps, right? And they'll literally schedule it. They won't keep that app open all day on their phone where they get distracted. They will say, okay, you know, right before dinner or after dinner, I'm going to swipe for about a half an hour and that's it. And then you wait till the next day, but you don't let it become a distraction. And then lastly, okay. you want to think about, okay, if my career goes the direction I want it to go, which I'm sure it will, and if, you know, Mrs. Wonderful walks into your life, hopefully soon, you know, what other areas of your life do you want to polish up or, you know, evolve so that you can be living full out and thriving? Is there a personal hobby that you also have, something you'd like to do? Yeah, um, I like to play hockey or, you know, just kind of like some kind of competitive sport with uh, some friends or something maybe. Okay, there you go. So it's just one more thing to schedule. Now, it might be weekly. It might be monthly. So you just want to make sure that you schedule the classes, 
the dating time, the hockey time, just spread them out enough so that you don't burn out. That is the key to living full out. Okay. But thank you so much for calling in and we'll be wishing you all the best and all the ladies will be listening and hoping that they find you. Okay. Thank you for all calling right. in. Yep. Thank, thank you. you. So much. Yep. I love that he asked that question, right? Because it is about finding that balance. And sometimes we have to trust our instincts as to, is this the best time for me to go after a goal, after an ambition, or maybe put it off for a month or a year and then pick it up at a time when you can really go for it. Now, I'm getting word from our producer that we have another caller on the line. Hi, welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hi. My name is Hi. Jonas. Hi, and Jonas. How can we help you? Me. Yes. Um, so I've recently entered my first, like, serious relationship, and I'm in what they commonly call the honeymoon phase right now. And my question was, how can I, like, keep it going after, like, this initial phase? How can I... Like, keep the honeymoon phase going for as long as possible. That is such a great question, right? The butterflies, the sweaty palms, the what am I going to wear? You know, those are great moments. But what you want to think about is, for example, this person's in your life. What do you cherish most about them in terms of your time with them? Um, just the attitude, the happiness. Like, uh, all around, she's a very happy person. Um, and mm -hmm. I need that in my life. It kind of gives me energy, you know, when mm -hmm. when school is rough or when life is hard. And um, I like that a lot. And when that person gives you positive energy, do you give it back? I do. I'm okay. a very positive person in general, so I don't have a problem with that. So you know what? It's just about establishing positive habits that go beyond the honeymoon stage. Okay, so what that might be is if you get in a routine of maybe sending each other emails or texts, you know, I hope you have a great day or thinking of you, right? That does not have to be only in the honeymoon stage. That can be just the way that you are, right? So little I'm thinking of you messages can, can, can help. The other thing is if you're both into motivation, then when you have some downtime and your partner might do the same, consider going on YouTube or finding a video that you think that person would like that would inspire them or move them forward. So if your partner is overwhelmed or stressed about work or maybe they have a, a deadline coming up, then maybe you go on and you find a motivational video that supports that topic. Do you see what I'm saying? So if your foundation is about motivation and positivity, then it's just about keeping things in play that will go beyond that honeymoon stage. Does that make sense? And, and today, I just want to say we're talking about trusting your instincts. So whenever you get that intuitive hit, you know what? I'm just going to call her or call him and say hi. Do it. I'm just going to send a quick message and say hi. Do it. Because it's trusting those instincts, knowing that that's what the other person needs. Okay? Okay. Yep. Thank you so much for calling in. Thank you so much, Nancy. Absolutely. Yep. Now, I, I love that that caller actually asked that question, right? Because in his scenario, it's this honeymoon stage. But in life, we can get complacent. We can feel as though sometimes we're going in circles and why are we not where we want to be, right? So trust those instincts. There's going to be days where you should go full throttle, right? And really put yourself out there and be adventurous. You're feeling on point. You got a good night's sleep and, and the focus is there. But then there's going to be other days where you are just going to know that you're off. Maybe you didn't sleep well. Maybe you went out and you're feeling a little sluggish. You know, maybe you're overwhelmed and you're tired. And uh, this is one of those days where I just need to kind of, you know, minimize my commitments, right? You want to trust that. And sometimes it means you have to say no or not right now and turn down some offers. It might mean that you need to just hit the pause button. I'm all about that life remote, right? Picture yourself having this remote where at any point you can pause and, and just literally check out, turn down the phones, turn off the computer, lay down, might sleep, you might meditate, whatever you want to do, that's the pause button. And you can also do that if you're in a relationship. If you're having a great night with someone, then pause and be with that person and just let that moment wash over you. 
And at the same time, we might need to take that remote and hit fast forward. Okay, this day is not going well. I'm just going to go all the way to the end and maybe hit go to bed early, right? And sometimes you can rewind. You can go back, and if you had a really great day, then go back and revisit what made it so great. So think about your remote control for your life. Now, when we come back, we're going to be joined by our inspirational guest, Andrea Davis. It's all about trusting your instincts today. That is how you live full out, and that's when you know that you're living a life of purpose. I am Nancy Soleri. This is the Living Full Out Show, and we'll be right back after this break. Stay with us. Professional skateboarder Tony Hawk here with Bugs Money and Daffy Duck to remind you to get moving every day. Because when you get moving an hour a day, you'll have the energy to skate through anything. <laughs> nice play on white, Doc. That's how I roll, Bugs. So whether you like to work the half pipe, now that's catching air, kick the soccer ball around, or dance in your room, just move it your way for an hour a day. The way you like to move, as long as you're moving. Carve out some time every day and get active. Because it's time to do a 180 on what you think exercise is. Because it can be whatever you want it to be. So be a player. Be a player. Get up and play an hour a day, Doc. Check out how to be a player at letsmove.gov. Head online to get tips on great ways to get moving every day. At www.letsmove.gov. Let's hear that one more time, Doc. That's www.letsmove.gov. A message from the Ad Council and HHS. Every day I wake up at 5 to give dad his medicine. Every day I wake up at 5 to give dad his medicine. At 6 I make his breakfast. Every day I wake up at 5 to give dad his medicine. At 6 I make his breakfast. At 7 I shower. Every day I wake up For at For those five. caring for a loved one, we hear you. That's why AARP created a community to help us better care for ourselves and the ones we love. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. I'm Sarah, and this is my story. I'm Ellen, and this is my story. One night, I was at a bar. One night, I was at a bar. I was having fun with my friends. I was having fun with my friends. I had one too many drinks. I had one too many drinks. I got behind the wheel to go home. I got a cab to go home. All of a sudden, from out of nowhere, a squirrel ran across the road. And all of a sudden, from out of nowhere, a squirrel ran across the road. It happened so quickly, I barely had time to react. It happened so quickly, the cabbie barely had time to react. I swerved. The cab swerved. I can't believe it. I hit a guy. I cannot believe it. The cabbie just missed a guy. I wish I took a cab. Thank goodness I took a cab. You have the choice to save a life. Don't drive buzzed. It's a decision you'll never regret. Buzzed driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. Hey, America, we need to have a little talk. We've got more food than we know what to do with in this country, yet 17 million kids in America are struggling with hunger. Makes no sense. Luckily, the Feeding America Nationwide Network of Food Banks has volunteers gathering excess food and getting it to hungry kids. They're kind of like food angels. Hey, become a food angel yourself by supporting Feeding America in your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. We can't do it without your help. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. If you think depression is all in a person's head, you're right. It's a brain illness. And like other illnesses, it has symptoms. Depression can make those who suffer from it feel hopeless. It can even lead to suicide. Learn how to stop depression from taking another life. Call SAVE, Suicide Awareness Voices of Education. 1-888-511-SAVE. On the web at save.org. I'm Alec Baldwin. Like any parent, I'm concerned about children's health. Many kids don't eat as they should and are at risk for long-term health problems like diabetes and heart disease. But here's good news. Fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and other low-fat vegetarian foods can protect our kids and keep the rest of the family healthy too. For a free booklet, call the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine at 1-877-685-KIDS. Or visit www.kidsgethealthy.org. 
You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. With Nancy's expertise, you'll learn how to embrace your potential and strive for success. If you have a question or need further support, send us an email at connect at livingfulloutcom Now, here's Nancy. Thank you for joining us today. I am Nancy Soleri, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're talking about trusting your instincts. And sometimes that's easier said than done, but... You have to believe in yourself and know that you are going to make the right decision. And even if it's the wrong one, well, you know what? You got to make a decision. So it's either right or left. And our inspirational guest today, Andrea Davis, had to do the same thing. When her and her husband in 2012 went on a cruise ship, they hit rock and it started sinking. And they had to instinctually make the decision to jump to safety and swim to shore. And that was not an easy one. So I'd like to welcome Andrea to the show. Hi, Nancy. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. No, your story, I'm telling you, I, when Titanic came out, I literally saw it eight times in a row. I, I, I know it was a three hour movie, but it was riveting. It just had me. And, um, and so when I heard your story, I was like, oh my gosh, she's like Kate Winslet. (laughs) <laughs> and, and her husband's like, Leo, you know, you guys really had to make a similar call. Now, yeah. can you take our audience back, right? It's 2012. You're on this cruise ship celebrating Lawrence's 60th birthday. And you guys were, you know, common cruisers. You you went on a lot of, of different vacations. And we can you tell? Were. Yeah. And can you share with us kind of that evening, the environment? Oh, Nancy, so- we call ourselves cruise junkies. This is what we loved doing most. And believe it or not, what we still do love doing most. It doesn't go without the emotional trauma and very, very horrific memories. But that night was, if, if one can put themselves in the juxtaposition of being at the peak of doing what you love to do most and having the time of your life to within a split second, being taken down to the lowest of low of all extreme. We'd had a magnificent day in Rome. We were having dinner with wine, song and dance with wonderful friends that we had met. And 9.30 at night, all of a sudden the dining room goes into pitch darkness, screaming in all directions, hot food, debris and wine falling all over us and absolutely clueless. Where is this mm. coming from? What's happening to us? What are we to do now? And and I'm just curious, did you hear anything? I mean, what was the... Totally. My recollection was... gives me back mm. this sharp, screeching, grating noise in the background. Mm. But of course, at the time, I had no idea where this was coming from, or what it might be. Um, Our first notification was an announcement to say, please be patient, we have an electrical problem, which we're attending to as soon as possible. Of course, not until days after did I put two and two together and realize, in fact, what the noise was that I still to this day have in the back of my mind and cannot remove myself from the memory. Yeah. I, I can I can picture that. And you know, I'm just curious because so many times throughout your story you had to trust your instincts. You had to make some judgment calls. And one was when you were in that that ballroom having dinner, how did you guys get out? If it was pitch dark and glass was, was everywhere. Dark. There was a very low light that came on uh, probably a few seconds later, an emergency generator. And um, immediately after we hovered under the table for protection of the falling debris until probably within minutes, they started ushering people out the dining room. But it was, it was a total stampede of hysteria. It was broken glass and broken shards of wood and chandeliers and food debris all over. I do recall I had kicked my shoes off under the table, which I typically do when I'm comfortable and having fun. 
And I shouted to Lawrence, get my handbag, my purse is hanging on the back of my chair and my shoes. As I put my foot out, I just felt glass and mushy food and know that I needed some protection. And we, we creeped out following the mass of people. It was an absolute stampede in front of us. I can only imagine how fast your heart must have been beating, you know, and, and, and just flashes of your life wondering, you know, what's going to happen next, you know, and, and, and where Nancy, do we go? You have, you have no idea at the moment. At that mm-hmm. very moment, you don't think one moment ahead. It's, your body becomes mechanical. It's just, you know, put left and mm-hmm. behind right and right in front of left and go where there's a gap. You, you don't. You don't think of anything. In fact, wow. as you call it instinct, all you have to do is follow where your instinct takes you. And when you got out of the ballroom and you started to make your way to the outside, did they start to give you any direction other than just it was an electrical issue? Absolutely not. In fact, hours transpired from the time we got out of the dining room until there was a, the ultimate call to evacuate the ship, my instinct told me to hover around the guest services desk, which we were closest to at the time. As we got out the dining room, Lauren said to me, I'm going up to our stateroom to get our life jackets. During our master draw, we had been told there will always be life jackets in your stateroom. Well, I said to him, Don't leave me. There's no way we're ever going to find each other in this pandemonium. And that was probably the wisest. I keep on asking myself, which was the wisest call? But he could not have got to our stateroom. There was no power. The elevators weren't working. And neither was the key card to our stateroom. So we did make that decision to hover around the guest services desk, hoping that customer service would be the first ones to have any idea of direction or help us advise us. There were a few disabled people and elderly in the same era as us, which I knew that they were going to be the first ones to be evacuated if there was a Mm. problem. Little did we know at the time that people had made their way to the deck four, which was the deck where the lifeboats would be released. From. And other people, in fact, friends that we had met up with and other survivors, had made their way to Deck 4 immediately after the disaster. And mm. in fact, were the first ones off the ship. So here we were following our guts and our instincts to feel that by guest services we would have all the notifications. My memory, you know, it's. You want to remember seeing on their faces is yeah. smiles and grins. This is how these people had been trained under all circumstances smile and well then, you know it's it's and andrea i'm we have to go to a commercial break but you're taking cool. me right where i want us to go when we come back so everybody Thank stay you. with us we are talking to andrea davis about surviving this ship crash that occurred and and fi- trusting her instincts so this is the living full out show i'm nancy Soleri, and make sure to stay with us and we'll be right back You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. There are many sounds in your day-to-day life. There are sounds that wake you up. Sounds that make you smile. Sounds that energize you. And sounds that help you relax. But there are some sounds that can alert you to danger and can help save lives. Wireless emergency alerts, now on many mobile devices, use a unique sound and vibration to bring you information about severe weather events, amber alerts, or other emergencies in your area. With critical information from local sources you know and trust, you can be in the know, wherever you are. For more information, visit ready.gov alerts. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. 
Hello, my name is Jeffrey, but people in this town call me Maniac. They call me that because I'm the fastest runner in town. But just because everyone knows who I am doesn't mean I belong. I don't really belong anywhere. You see, I'm an orphan, and I wander the streets just looking for a place that I can truly call home. My name is Maniac McGee, and I'm all alone. Explore new worlds. Read my story in the novel Maniac McGee by Jerry Spinelli. For other great book ideas, visit your local library or log on to literacy.gov. Brought to you by the Library of Congress and the Ad Council. Look for the bare necessities. The bare necessities of healthy living are easier than you think. You better believe it. And the food pyramid shows you the way. With just the right amount of exercise and the necessary grains, vegetables, fruits, milk, and meats and beans. Just the bare necessities of life. So eat right, be active, (laughs) and have fun. Yeah, man. For your own path to a healthier you, visit MyPyramid.gov. This is really living. This message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Ad Council. Hi, my name is Nancy Soleri, host of the Living Full Out Show. I am excited to let you know that we are now associated with Alexa. If you have Alexa in your house and you didn't know that, go ahead and find Living Full Out because you can hear us anytime you want and we're there for you to keep you motivated. Go to your app store because we're located there as well. Just look for the Living Full Out radio show. It's important to us that we put out really inspiring programming but we want to make sure that you have it at your fingertips when you need us most. We never know when those challenges are going to come, when we're going to feel lonely and need that motivation. So just know that when you need us, we're here for you. Check out Alexa, the app stores, or go to livingfullout.com. Here's to you living full out. What if I could tell you that a full-blown wildfire was going to occur tomorrow right where you live? Tell you exactly which neighborhoods it would engulf and how fast it would do it. The first thing you would do is talk with your loved ones and make a plan today. It's true. I can't tell you a wildfire will strike tomorrow. But shouldn't you make a plan anyway? Go to ready.gov slash communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Driving has a rhythm all its own. Don't wreck it with a text. Before you get behind the wheel, silence your phone. Or better yet, designate a texter. For more text-free driving tips, visit stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Solari. As a life coach, Nancy can teach you how to stay strong under pressure and work through challenges you face. Being legally blind, Nancy inspires others to be resilient in overcoming obstacles and live full out. You can ask Nancy for advice in your life on relationships, finance, business, health, and more. Just call in at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. Now, here's Nancy. Welcome back. I'm Nancy Solari, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're talking about trusting your instincts. And our inspirational guest today, Andrea Davis, is such a good example of that. When her and her husband, Lawrence, were on a cruise in 2012, and it started to sink due to hitting rocks. And the thing is, is only in that moment, you have to make instinct decisions. You have to know that, you know, however this is going to go, every minute of that journey for them, they had to make a call. And so I'd like to welcome Andrea back to the show. Hi, Nancy. Hi there. Hey, I wanted to ask you, so it makes perfect sense that you would hang by the guest services, right? That's right. And I know that eventually you did get to the level where these, you know, safety boats were. But I also know that there weren't enough. There were not enough right. for all the passengers. So what did you it and Lawrence decide to do then? Nancy. It was approximately three and a half hours after the accident first happened until mm-hmm. there was the ultimate evacuate ship signal. We scurried across the floor once again through broken glass pane doors, banging in front of our faces, water all over us by now. 
uh, to get to the deck and there were no longer enough lifeboats. The lifeboats, the one side of the ship had raised so high as it was listing over and the other side of the ship was now sinking. So the lifeboats on either side of the ship could no longer be dispatched. We were holding on for any possible opportunity and eventually got to what we hoped would be our ultimate when a inflatable life raft was being opened in front of our eyes. It took what seemed like ages at the time to have this released and inflated, but little did we know as it was becoming inflated, the ship was now sinking so rapidly that it got trapped under the metal beams and there was no way that within adequate time they were able to release this inflatable lifeboat. By which time we were going lower and lower down with the sinking ship. Our knees were now under the level of the raising waters and we had no alternative but to look at each other, grab onto each other in our heart of hearts, of course. I often think, did we think about this might be our last moment? Did we think about the what lay ahead of us? This is where one has to follow one's own instinct. There was no second guessing. There was no To the right, we have one way. To the left, we have another. We have Hmm. to follow our own instinct. And so you jumped. Right, and you jumped into the water. And, you know, the thing that's so interesting about that is it's pitch dark. You're in this freezing cold water. And I don't know. I would be thinking, are there sharks in this water? Am I, A, am I going to make it to land? Or am I going to get gobbled up along the way? What was your Nancy, state of mind? My husband still laughed at me as we had jumped off and we were exactly as you described in the pitch dark, freezing winter Mediterranean in the middle of the night. And my head bobbed up. I shouted to him, are there sharks in the water? Well, of <laughs> course, this is a story that he has humored me for the last seven years. And I had been told that the are known to be sharks in the Mediterranean, Mm. but this is what I had on my mind. We had no idea where we were. We had no idea where we were swimming to. We had no idea what lay ahead. Of course, we knew what was behind us, and Mm -hmm. it was swim, kick, splash, swim, kick, splash. Well, and and you did eventually hit shore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you did eventually yeah. get to it, the rocks. Now, unfortunately, it wasn't a it wasn't a sandy beach inviting you, right? It, it was right. this rocky cove. You're expecting a warm sandy beach. I had no shoes. I had kicked my shoes off in the water and faced with this huge, big, sharp edged rock cliff in front of me. I had recently had a hip replacement surgery, and of course, all I was worried about during this event that was my hip was going to become dislodged. Somehow or other, mm. I had a superpower behind me, and I scoured up the rocks. After we had, in fact, taken that first plunge out the water, people began following us, and all I recall hearing this noise was people splashing behind me. When we started scouring up the rocks, there was a line, a stream of people, and wow. one was pushing me, being at the top, So we were being pushed up one by one, and eventually we got to the top of this rock cliff. And that is the moment that I most recall absolute horror. Turned Mm. around and looked back at the ship, which was now sinking further and further. We saw in front of us the devastation, the emergency rescues, the helicopters, the lights in front of us. But nobody knew we were there. Nobody Mm. knew in the darkness that we had swum across and we were stranded on this rock cliff in the middle of the dark night. And, of course, once again, it took hours until we were eventually rescued. Some local islanders had seen the flashing life beams of our life jackets Mm -hmm. and sent out for help. 
And well, and I think, and I, I think, Andrea, and Andrea, the beginning. Can you hear me? Okay. So I, 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 okay. I. I I think it's amazing how all of that transpired and kudos to you and your husband for taking that leap of faith truly and in swimming to safety. Now, what I think is also kind of interesting is once you got through the night, right, as part of your journey home back to Canada, back to true safety for the heart, the mind, the soul, you name it, you actually had to get on a ferry as part of your journey home. How did you do that? How did you muster the energy, the courage to do that? And Nancy, you're just incredible. You're just putting yourself right in that very moment. Our first call was to the Canadian Embassy. I had said to our daughter, we had got into a rescue shelter, and I shouted out, I need a phone. I need to call our children. I need to tell them we had survived. And again, instinct told me, let them know to get hold of the Canadian Embassy, we need help. It was hours later till they traced us down and put a return call in to the cell phone number. Of course, I didn't know whose phone it was or be able or even think of giving them a telephone number. But they had tracked us down. And I recall saying to this very, very kind lady on the phone, they're telling me that I need to get onto a ferry to get me back home. I cannot do this. Please send a helicopter for me. Well, I do remember the conversation and being told, Mrs. Davis, we're doing the best we can to take care of you. We will get you home to safety. And there's many episodes within the following three days that I have this very, very vivid recollection and getting onto that ferry to get across from the island back to mainland was mm. petrifying. I bet. Amazing. I mean, you know, just when you think it's over, it's not over. You know, jump on a ferry. And, you know, I wanted to ask you, because the, you know, I could talk to you for hours, but the interview only can be so long. I, I'm just curious, after having experienced all of this, and now we're talking about present day, when you go into a hotel or into a venue or on a plane or on another cruise ship, Are you hypersensitive now about knowing where exits are, where life preservers are, what is our our plan? Absolutely, I am, Nancy. I'm extra sensitive with my environment and surroundings wherever we are. And I'm extra sensitive with panic and people and noises and sirens and alarms that recall being in a hotel room not long after the devastation and there was an an evacuation signal coming from the alarm system. And the panic and the fear is extraordinary. This is a whole new me. As I say, today was the first day of the rest of my life because you can never approach life in inverted commas with the same attitude as one has previously done. You, one's relationships change, one's memories change, everything tangible is different. You walk around observing things around you. We think yeah. about ourselves and think about our emotional standing, that our relationship I can, with people. I can, I can see that. I can see that. And Andrea, I want to just, first of all, thank you. You know, we have to say goodbye at this point now, believe it or not. It's wild how time flies so fast with you. But but I just want to thank you so much for sharing your story. And honestly, I, I will think about you the next time I'm on a cruise ship. And for everybody listening, it's really about opening our eyes, our ears, and having a safety plan. When we hear her story, that's what we need to take away from it. So... Thank you very much, Andrew, for being and on the show. Trust oneself, Nancy, because nobody's going to make that plan for us. We're we're in charge of ourselves, and we have to trust our own instincts. And well we will said. Be fine. Well right. said. I agree completely. Thank you so much, Thank Andrew, you. for being on today's show, and uh, we'll be wishing you all the best. Thanks, Nancy. Bye bye. Bye. And you know, for everybody listening, gosh. I don't know about you guys, but I I can only imagine the fear 
the, the, the amount of stress and anxiety that they went through. But that's very replicable of life, right? We're all gonna have those moments. It may be a car accident that you're in. It may be a loss of a job. It may be uh, abuse or bullying. But we can rally, we can survive these moments, but you do have to trust your instinct. You do need to lean on the support of others. And when you do that, you will have the strength. In her case, she found this super strength out of nowhere to swim to shore. But you have that same ability to get that super strength, to get through whatever hard time it is that you're facing right now. Believe in that, and most of all, know that you can get out of those tragic situations and get to a life where you're living full out. So stay with us, and we're gonna be coming right back taking more of your calls. I am Nancy Solari, this is the Living Full Out Show, and we'll be right back. It's all about trusting your instincts. Stay with us. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human, and she's got this little toy she's always playing with, all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese, and guess what? Egg rolls showed up, like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the shelterpetproject.org. So, Jacqueline. Yes, Mom? I wanted to talk to you about something, and... Oh, wait. Hold on. I just got a text. Oh, wait, Mom. I just got a message. So many comments on my comment. Hey, guys, check out my wait. new video game. Mom, what? Huh? Pew, pew. What'd you say? This huh? weekend, unplug. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. To find the forest nearest you, go to discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Thanks for asking, but I'd rather not send you nude pictures. I'm camera shy. I already said no. It's against my religion. I'm giving my dog a bath. You can have pictures of that. Pressure gives me hives. Under my clothes, I'm a robot. Hold on. Let me ask my mom. Sorry, my webcam is broken. I'm worried they'll get passed around school. Unfortunately, I just had my clothes surgically attached to my body. If they got out, I might never be president. I'm already naked, under my clothes. Not even if you were all three Jonas Brothers. I have a rash. I have nudophobia. I have lizard skin. The more you ask, the less I want to. You're not the boss of me. Nudity makes me vomit. I'm a vampire, so I don't show up in pictures anyways. Your badgering has really killed the mood. When someone is pressuring you to do something you don't want to, how many ways can you say no before they get the message? Let us know at that'snotcool.com. Brought to you by the Ad Council. If you own a gun, you have a full-time responsibility. When you aren't using it, be sure it can't get into the hands of curious children, troubled teenagers, a thief, or anyone else who might misuse it. Your family, friends, and neighbors are all counting on you. Remember, always lock it up. For more information on firearm storage safety, visit ncpc.org. This message brought to you by the National Crime Prevention Council, the Bureau of Justice Assistance, and the Ad Council. This is a test to find out if you know it all when it comes to children. Name one of the leading killers of U.S. children age 1 to 13. What's the best way to protect children in a car crash? At what age and size should a child start using a booster seat? Don't assume you know it all when it comes to car seats for your child. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat and know for sure. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. When I grow up, I want to be a new pair of blue jeans. When I grow up, I want to be a kid's first computer. I want to be a, warm on a, I want to be a football I want stadium. to be a bike that races around the country. I want to be a bench on a forest trail. When I grow up, I don't want to be a piece of garbage. And if you recycle me, I won't be. Give your garbage another life. Recycle. Learn how at IWantToBeRecycled.org. Brought to you by Keep America Beautiful and the Ad Council. Well, I finally did it. My student loan is totally paid off. What? What about our plan to win the lottery and start living? You know, travel the world on matching yachts. Wear enough jewelry to require a bodyguard. Vacation on the French Riviera. And then buy it. You know we're never going to win the lottery, right? 
When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. To trust your instincts, you have to look around you. You have to think about what are the resources that are available to you in the moment? What support can you turn to or lean on in order to have the strength to stand up? The biggest thing is trusting your instincts is knowing that you have to take that step forward and that you will make the best decision and not to doubt yourself. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Solari. Nancy is here as a guide to show you how to rise above obstacles and savor each moment. If you have a question, call in live at 800-333-0001. That's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Thank you for joining us today. I am Nancy Stellari, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we've been talking about trusting your instincts. You know, there's going to be times in our life where we're going to not know if we're making the right decision. And just like our last guest when she had to jump off that cruise ship, Sometimes you just have to, with everything you have, say, I'm going to do it. I'm, t- I'm just going to take that step. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make that judgment call. And just with that leap of faith, hope that it's all going to work out. But most of all, just trusting your instincts, knowing that you're making the best decision in the moment that you can. And that's all you can ever do. So I'm getting word from our producer that we have a caller on the line. Hi, welcome to Living Full Out Show. Hi, my name is Tina, and I have a question. Yes. Um, So I'm having a career change, and I decided to change my career, but Mm -hmm. I'm having trouble figuring out what it is I exactly love to do. Mm, That's a great question. I and I would imagine there's freedom around that because you could do anything, but I imagine it's also kind of exhausting, right? Because it's like, where do you begin? And so the question of the day is, and I'm sure you've had a lot of successes, a lot of different transitions in your life already, but if you could do something for a living and it almost didn't feel like work, what would your first answer be? Food. Food. Let's start there. And the other question I have for you is related to food. When people think of you and they think of your strengths, they think of what you're good at related to food, what do you think they would say? I think I'm flexible and I'm a problem solver. Okay. When it comes to food, how are you flexible and a problem solver when it comes to food specifically? I think I'm flexible with recipes and being you know, if I don't have a certain ingredient, then I can, you know, make do with the recipe and still make it taste good mm-hmm. and have a good turnout. And when you cook or when you uh, prepare food for other people, do you do it more because you, you want to entertain or is it more like the exploring part of it? I think it's both. I like, you know, doing stuff for other people and having them enjoy the things that I cook. But I also mm-hmm. like you know, creating something and, you know, enjoying it all at the same time. And and so, and so I want you, we're taking, we're talking today about trusting our instincts. Okay. And I want you to trust that your first answer was food. And so now the journey starts where if I could have a career in food, what would that look like? And you could do this a couple of different ways. You could go on to even a site like LinkedIn, search food, search, you know, catering, search restaurants, you know, just kind of see what is out there. What are other people doing as possible career options? Because I think LinkedIn is a great way to see different titles and different roles that people play in, in how they live out their career life. You could also Google people that you admire, could be a celebrity, could just be someone local in your area. And look at their bio, look at what they did to gain experience to where they are today. It doesn't mean that you have to be them, but maybe they had a role. Maybe they had a job at one time that you're like, wow, that's interesting if I could do that. Do you see what I'm saying? 
it, you want to yeah. take this time of exploring and make it fun. And now you know that food is the lane you want to go into. So if you were in a career or maybe you had your own business, maybe you already joined an established business, but if you could like cook and teach and design recipes and do all that for a living, wouldn't that just be the best? Yeah. Yeah. So is really that something would. you can do? Yeah, I definitely will look into those options. Thank you. Do you have a LinkedIn account? No, I have to create one. <laughs> okay. So step one, become buddies with someone who knows LinkedIn. I'm sure you know somebody. Start there. Let them help you. Okay. Uh, I'm just trying to eliminate the blocks, right? A block might be, I don't have an account or I don't know how to use it. This is when you turn to your support team so that they can help you get to living your dream. Okay. But yeah. thank you so much for calling in. Thank you so much. Have a good day. You're, you too. Thank you. And for everybody listening today, it is about trusting our instincts, but knowing that the end goal, that dream, that ambition that you have, it is possible. You literally just have to take one step at a time. Know that if you make the wrong decision, it's okay. It's not a deal breaker. Start over, turn a new page, but you just want to keep moving forward in life. That's what it means to live full out. Don't be complacent or stuck. If a, a negative day happens, shake it off and just know that that is all part of what it means to live full out and to grow and learn. So we believe in you here at the Living Full Out family, and we'll be seeing you on our next show. Until then, here's to you living your life full out. Thank you for listening to The Living Full Out Show with Nancy Soleri. To learn more about this program, visit livingfullout.com for the latest episodes. Connect with The Living Full Out community by following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. If you have an inspirational story you want to share, email us at connect at livingfullout.com. Here's to you, Living Full Out.